Welcome back to the Starting Strength series. This week we're talking with Charles Staley of Staley Training Systems. And uh, most of you guys that are on the internet have been familiar with Charles for quite some time. He's been on the web quite a bit longer than I have. And uh, uh, we're fortunate that he decided to make the road trip. Charles, thanks for driving over. Thank you so much. Drove in from Phoenix, did Drove you? Drove in from Phoenix. Well, at least we got some decent weather for you here. Uh, what's, uh, what's going on Staley Training Systems these days? I hear you guys are uh, changing a few things up. Talk to us about the bed and barbell situation. Bed and barbell is kind of our uh, hands-on aspect of the business, and uh, I think it's kind of unique. People actually come and they stay with us. They live with us. It's a dorm. Well, it, it, it's it's a big house that we converted into a gym for. for it's like a, it's like a bunkhouse. It's nicer than a bunkhouse. Well, I mean, I mean we, we got they're nice we have a cutting green and a swimming pool and uh, you know uh, everything. But yeah, we've got uh, uh, it's a it's actually a five bedroom house and uh, right. which happens to be uh, thirty feet across the street from my own house uh, where I live. So, so you kind of keep track. Of we've got uh, you know I've got a thirty. 30 step commute but we can uh, we've got gyms in both garages and uh, a park and the whole thing so yeah so it's residential training well um, that's a that's an interesting concept I don't think anybody else really is doing it like this uh, what is the what's the the booking situation you guys have people call you and I know that a lot of out of the country business is coming in I keep yeah, hearing about for whatever reason a lot of people European, from Europe Canada um, okay. And you know, it depends on which bedroom. We've got a big master suite, and we've got smaller bedrooms, so it depends how many people, which bedroom it is, how long you're staying, mm -hmm. what kind of supervision you want. So rates can, you know, just like any type of situation like that, they're variable. But uh, Call for rates and availability. So absolutely. when uh, people get there, when people get to bed and barbell, uh, I am assuming, uh, you being the good coach that you are, that you set them up in a, into a training situation that is commensurate with their ability. So I guess you get media, intermediate, advanced, novice, all kinds of people there, right? You get it across the board. We, we especially like exposing people to, to strength training and barbell training who uh, might not otherwise uh, be exposed to it. So right. that could mean anything from people uh, uh, over 40. Uh, sometimes it means women. Sometimes it means uh, uh, people with, with physical problems or people who don't view themselves as athletic. But we view that as the core of our business. We want to expose people to the benefits of strength training who, who, might, who, who might fall through the cracks otherwise and, and who might not think that, that they could participate in that. And uh, I've received a lot of benefits from barbell training over the course of my life, and we just want to... We want to expose this to people that uh, might not otherwise have the chance. Well, so uh, who do you find primarily showing up at the bed and barbell? Over is 40. There, is there a demographic? Over that 40 it, professional people, but athletic right. over 40 generally. Uh, athletic people, business people, uh, people looking to kind of get back into a better situation uh, as they were maybe 20, 30 years ago. Right. But people who understand training, I mean, people who come into our doors are not novices. There are people who kind of have followed right. me. Over time. They've had some type of they've had some athletic exposure. exposure. Yeah, so we get beginners sometimes as well, um, and uh, we get a lot of these people competing. I've had a lot of people right. come in. They follow up their their stay with We've you. We've had. With I'm going thinking to of a client of mine, uh, Martha from uh, Northern California. She came in. And we exposed her to Olympic weightlifting at age 55, and uh, despite she, the fact. That adults can't learn to do the Olympic lifts. Des despite that, despite that uh, fact, despite that significant obstacle, mm -hmm. we did this, and she went and uh, did American Open, Masters Americans, and won. And she's oh, got God. her sights on world. She did seven meets last year. Oh God! And oh, uh, good. you know, we expose people to this stuff. So she's well, training you just under Butch her Curry. Sport, actually, you? she's training under Butch Curry up yeah. uh, in Northern California and doing meets and loving it. And Great. it's opened up a whole new. Uh, world of possibilities uh, yeah. for, and we've had a lot of stories like that. Well, we're going to talk about that later, what competition does to your training, mm. but uh, let's, oh, why the European thing? Do you have any feel for what the I teach, I teach, I teach what the in hell Italy is? a lot. I teach over there a lot. I don't know if it's the dollar, the economy uh, may have something to right. do with it, but we get a lot of people from England, uh, Ireland, um, Holland, uh, Canada. Mm -hmm. um, we got a lot of that. It, I have an intern coming in uh, from Italy 
uh, in a couple of months, staying with us for six weeks. So what is your Italian connection over there? What's I've got a friend, uh, Sandro Ciccarelli, who runs something called Olympians News in, uh, in um, um, Florence. And he's got a big gym there and a supplement. He, he's kind of like the Joe Weider of Italy, okay. in, in a sense. And anything that happens fitness, bodybuilding related, he's kind of the king cheese out there. And he's been bringing me out there once or twice a year for seminars for three, four years now. And uh, it's a blast. And you know, Well, that's, that would be cool. I've never gotten to go to Italy. It's, it's interesting. And fitness is kind of an interesting bag there. Bodybuilding is, is still very big in, in mm -hmm. Italy. But uh, they're very open and interested to learning, and uh, I, I know Pavel Satsalin has gone out a lot and done kettlebell right. stuff. And uh, but uh, he, you know, it's um, it's it's interesting, and they they look at Americans as the pinnacle of the whole fitness right. situation. They, we're and still the kings of physical culture, as far as the Europeans are concerned. Until, right? Probably until they come out and see what what people look like in the U.S. Right. But, uh, until they but, actually come into a Walmart. Correct. Here in peopleofwalmart.com. If you haven't been there. It's a good place to go. Yeah, I've, yeah, it's a it's a fascinating website, like yeah. that like that mullet website. That thing's yeah. still running. Remember uh, the mullet website? I haven't I haven't been to that, but you can. oh, it's it's magnificent. Pictures of mullet after mullet after mullet. People that are flying the mullet flag in its full glory that aren't even aware of the fact that they're on the website. Apparently, I'm amazed you know this. Well, you know, I get around a little bit, <laughs> so. Uh, what uh, happens at the bed and barbell on a daily basis? What's mm -hmm. the typical schedule there? You get these guys out of out of bed at the ass crack at dawn, no, or no, are no, they? No, 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 no. What's no. the what's the typical day? It's not like day? boot camp. It's not. You know, people don't come to. We always say people don't come to train or work out necessarily. They come to learn. So we really do a lot in terms of teaching mechanics and programming, but. Um, we don't wake them up at the, at the crack of dawn, but they're training, I would say, five days out of seven. If somebody comes in seven days, they're probably getting three privates and two groups. We've got uh, uh, group training on Wednesday afternoons and Saturday mornings, mm -hmm. and uh, probably not unlike what a lot of people do in terms of strongman, Olympic, uh, powerlifting, garage type stuff. So they, they join the group, and I think group training is, is a great way to learn. I think it's Sure. Tr tremendously uh, underrated. It's so, oh, I, I completely agree. It's a uh, uh, with in a personal training situation, one-on-one mm. uh, -on -one coach client, you lose quite a bit of the visual learning that you is do. that is possible you when you're in a group of other people that you can watch being coached by the same guy, and it's a, it's a completely different part of the brain that gets worked. In this way, and both are very important. Well, I always say, like, if you've ever seen the dog, the, the show, The Dog Whisperer. Right. Have you Have you no. seen it? No, I don't watch oh, TV. Oh my God! Apparently, guys, not enough TV. People have seen The Dog Whisperer. But anyway, this is this. I dog, know about the mullet website. This though. is a, a dog trainer uh, guy who who's actually quite good at what he does, and uh, he has he has a pack of dogs that are strays that people bring him. So he's got this place in L.A. and it's this huge, you know, I don't know how many acre place it is, and he's got like a pack of fifty dogs. When he gets a client with an unruly <laughs> dog that just doesn't respond to anything. They just bring the dog to live with his pack of dogs for a couple of weeks, and they learn how to be a dog again. Learn how to sit, uh, fit into yeah. the pecking order. Yeah, again. you learn right. how to be a dog. Right. And so I think group training, I always use that parallel. I just think that you kind of pick stuff up, as you just alluded to, right. faster. You have the visual reference. Absolutely. Uh, if, if we're working on deadlifts and you see six people doing a deadlift, you, you can quickly sum up the differences, but also the similarities and, and the commonalities. Especially when you're comparing what you're hearing from the coach and, and to what, what you're seeing, seeing on the ground. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's, it's a tremendous uh, visual tool. Mm. Now, when, when we coach, we primarily, uh, you and I and everybody else that coaches barbell training, primarily rely on verbal signals to yes. the people we're teaching. And if it's just a one-on-one -on -one situation, that's basically all you've got. Because I know that I am damn sure not going to demonstrate a squat for a new client. Because it takes 45 minutes to get warmed up, and I may not be the greatest looking squatter. I came up with a new work. definition of master's lifter last week, actually. It's oh, when, yeah. if you look at the span of your workout, when the warm-up portion becomes greater than 50% the... of the entire portion, you're a master's right. lifter. That's probably true. Yeah. God. <laughs> that's, oh, yeah. 
That's absolutely. No, but you're right. That, I mean, you know, it takes a case. while to loosen up and, right. and, to, and, and to. So we can't demonstrate anything. But if you've got a group of other people there, you're yeah. you're not only receiving the verbal cueing right. from from the coach, but you're receiving uh, the visual input from yeah. the people that are being corrected. And by we, the I make my people coach each other, yeah. even if they're brand new, first day, and they don't have a clue. I, I say, okay, right. uh, Kim, I want you to coach Sandy. And the reason we do that is because it brings you into a more active mode of, of paying attention Precisely. and participating. Uh, it just brings you a, a heightened kind of sense of this is exactly the way we run our weekend really? seminars really yes we we everybody coaches and everybody is an athlete at the mm. same time mm. because as you as a coach process the thing you're coaching in your head yeah, yeah. you learn about it yeah you learn about it every teacher has had the has had the experience of having to come up with a new explanation Mm -hmm. And in generating the new explanation, has learned something about the thing they're teaching themselves. Well, isn't the saying when one teaches, two learns, right? Absolutely. Wasn't that from your book? As Absolutely. a matter of fact, that's where oh, I we, that up. we get that quote yeah. from somebody yeah. smarter yeah. than me. Yeah. But that is a, uh, uh, a part of our seminar, and it's, uh, it's good that uh, you're doing the same thing because it validates cool. what, what we do as well. Uh, so the day starts, they get up, they eat. A healthy breakfast of grape nuts, juice, kiwi fruit, and some, uh, well, yeah. Probably more like bacon, yeah. eggs. Eggs, actually but protein not, type stuff. You know, we're not kind of food Nazis. Right. No, uh, I wouldn't expect that you eat. would be. Since I've eaten but, with you several times, I've, you're a fairly normal guy. They get up, they eat breakfast, class time. 11 o'clock. Little lecture, so you guys train about 11. 10, 11. 10, 11 o'clock when everybody gets ready to train. Yep. You do two-a-days. Uh, generally one a day. One? Yeah. What happens to the rest there of the day? There might be impromptu stuff. We actually, I think, are very good at kind of giving people uh, a little uh, tour uh, instruction, and we kind of uh, are pretty active in terms of letting people know what's available. And a lot of this is done before they arrive. So right. we actually, Julianne, who works with me, is very good at finding out what people are interested in, what their background is, mm -hmm. and she'll set them up with shopping or sightseeing. So they'll, be, do, oh, they'll be doing off-site activities be as hiking, well as being yeah, at the... Just any of that kind of stuff. So right. it's, it's not just training. Right. Phoenix is a great place. There's lots of stuff. Right. Uh, lots of stuff to do. Yeah. Well, that sounds like a, a fun weekend. People people book weekends or whole weekends, weeks. Weekends, weeks. Or... A whole, whole weeks are very common. That's probably yeah. the most common time frame. Right. Probably get five sessions. Come in Sunday, leave Saturday, that sort of thing. Yeah, very similar. Mm -hmm. And uh, we teach them how to train, we, and we teach them what it means to train, as opposed to, you Work know, out. we or, or exercise. Right. So that's, you know, a lot of these people come in exercisers and leave athlete as as athletes, mm -hmm. and that's that's really our goal. And uh, you know, we're trying to change people's behaviors for the better, and uh, just kind of open up possibilities for people. 